How to source and package property deals. Is it a good strategy for beginners? Can you actually make any money at it? What skills do you need to master to make a success of it? All of this and more is covered in this deep dive video, so stay tuned for more. Hi, my name is Ranjan Bhattacharya. If you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you're notified each time we release a new video, which we do so each and every week because on this channel, I like to share with you um, what I've picked up over my 30 years investing and developing properties. So you may have seen me before on the hit Sky TV show, Property Elevator, or attended our Big Street property meets in central London. So what's this all about? Well, there are a lot of words that seem to be used interchangeably. You hear the words lead sourcing, deal sourcing, deal packaging, deal trading, lead trading. What do all these mean? Are they all the same thing? So at its very core, what deal sourcing is all about is actually finding sellers who have a property for sale and matching it with an investor buyer who's looking to buy that property. Well, I guess what you could say is that's what an estate agent does. And you are more or less right. In fact, when you want to set yourself up as a deal sourcer, you actually have to go through the same compliance procedures and have the same accreditations as a typical estate agent would. So why would you want to be an estate agent, an estate agent just selling deals and opportunities to other uh, property investors? So let's start to deep dive into this, break it all down and look at deal sourcing and how you can make this into a serious business. Now, if you haven't done it already, smash that like button. It means that more property investors get to see this video. So first of all, we're gonna break down deal sourcing into the various types of things you can source. We're gonna look at the skills that you need to master to actually make a success out of this. We're gonna look at the unique problems with actually doing this and implementing this today. I'll also share with you why a lot of new people to property get deal sourcing completely wrong. And most importantly, I'll share with you what you need to be doing to make deal sourcing work on fire for you. So what do I know about deal sourcing? Well, back in the day, I founded a network called A Faster Sale. A Faster Sale was a deal sourcing network. We had 450 franchisees nationwide. We did uh, a lot of advertising for off-market uh, property deals uh, from motivated sellers who needed to sell quickly. Our call centers used to take 35,000 um, leads, uh, calls a year at the, at the call center for deals opportunities across the country. So let's look at what these leads were and the opportunities to monetize. So the first stage is what we call an unqualified lead. An unqualified lead is where you've put out some marketing and some vendor of a property basically contacts you. So you've just put out your message, hey, we buy property. And you may have put that out on the internet or Facebook ads or leaflets through people's doors, direct mail campaigns, all of that sort of stuff. And someone basically contacts you back um, and wants to discuss something further. That is what we call an unqualified lead. The next stage is a qualified lead. This is where the, uh, you've captured some basic information from uh, the potential seller and you are doing a little bit of um, um, research to find out how real the opportunity is. You see, when you put out the message that you want to buy property, you will get a lot of people who will contact you um, who simply are just tire kicking. They just want to, they're intrigued by your leaflet or whatever it is, or marketing that you put out there, uh, but they don't want to sell. Qualifying the lead is the process of asking a few short questions to figure out whether there's actually a deal opportunity there. And the questions you're asking are about determining just three things. Firstly, what's the reason for sale? there needs to be a clear, compelling reason for sale. Secondly, there has to be a time frame, a deadline at some point in the future by which time the seller has to sell. And thirdly, they need to have the capacity, by which I mean they need to have some equity in the property that they're selling in order to accept a slightly below market value offer in exchange for a quick, no-hassle transaction. You will find 
that unless all those three criteria are true, you will not actually be able to uh, make a deal which is um, juicy enough for an investor to be interested in. So a qualified lead is basically getting to the point where you've figured out that A, there's a reason for sale, there's a deadline, and there is capacity to accept a below market value offer. The third level is what we call a negotiated lead. And that's where you actually sit down with the vendor and agree terms. You're agreeing price, you're agreeing time scales for things like completion. You may be agreeing conditions such as subject to offers and the like. And most importantly, you're looking in some way to secure that lead. And the fourth area is what we call a packaged deal. And this is where you basically take this negotiated lead, package it up and offer it to an investor client in a turnkey way so that all the investor has to do is sign and put up the cash. Often there are also some post-completion services which are offered to investor clients, such as uh, property refurbishment and uh, ongoing letting and management of the property thereafter as well. We'll get back to the video in just a moment, but what I wanted to really tell you about was what is the most exciting opportunity in property right now, and that is repurposing defunct commercial buildings to residential use. Now, most people don't really know where to start, what to look for, and how to exploit these opportunities, and that's why I've prepared 90 minutes of free training for you to get you started on this wonderful journey. You can register for this free training at property-workshop.com. Join me on that free training, and I'll leave you to enjoy the rest of the video. Now, how much you charge for each one of these services go, it goes up. What you can charge goes up the more work you do as the deal sourcer. One of the big problems I see right now is a problem of language. People are using um, any of these phrases, basically, to mean the same thing. Some people out there are using the phrase deal packaging when all they're doing is finding a property in Liverpool uh, on right move, which is for sale with an estate agent, and trying to offer it as a package deal to some southern-based investor, uh, whacking on a 10% margin on top. So what skills do you need to be an effective deal sourcer? Well, number one is marketing. Sourcing deals is about finding properties which are off-market finding properties where the vendor hasn't yet contacted an agent to represent them yet. And to do that, you need to know how to market. You need to know how to get the message out there that you're looking to buy property and get them to have the confidence to give you a call and contact you in order to uh, progress that opportunity. The next skill to master is deal analysis. What are the numbers of the deal? Do they make sense? What are the risks to the deal? Are those risks manageable and mitigatable? And more importantly, would you actually do that deal with your own money? Ultimately, the deal analysis stage is about filtering out the crap, filtering out the deals which ain't deals. Because if they fail your deal analysis, uh, then why would you offer them to somebody else? The third skill to master is negotiation. And this is a very, very important skill to master when you're doing direct-to-vendor business. When you work with an estate agent, who do you deal with at the estate agent branch? You deal with a negotiator, a sales negotiator. The clue uh, to what they do is in their job title. The clue at what their skill is, is in their job title. When you are dealing directly with vendors, then you have got to um, be the master of negotiation. But you're doing it from a different point of view. Remember that. When you have an estate agent in the middle, remember they work for the seller. Their role in life is to handle the negotiation to achieve the maximum price for the property for their client, who is the seller and not you. When you're doing direct-to-vendor work, there is no agent. You're dealing directly with the seller you handle the negotiation, you need to master that skill in order to get the best deal.
And when you are negotiating directly with the vendor, there are a lot of things you can negotiate which would be very, very difficult to do when negotiating through a middleman such as an estate agent. For example, you see, estate agents get paid when the deal is done, that's when they get their commission. So if you want to make some kind of offer with any kind of conditionality or any kind of offer which Im implies a delayed completion, then the estate agent is less interested in that proposal. Why? Because it means they're going to have to wait much longer for their payday. Now a conditional offer or something um, that has a delayed completion can be very, very beneficial to you. For example, when you're doing sites uh, which have a planning uplift opportunity, you can offer something to the vendor subject to getting that planning permission. And when that planning permission comes through, you basically pay a higher price for that property. Now, those sort of arrangements are very, very flexible, very, very powerful, but are much harder to do when you have a middleman doing the negotiation on your behalf. The fourth skill you need to master is the project management skill. And that basically means you've got to be super organized and very effective at shifting sand and getting things done. Now, if you are growing your own portfolio, you're buying properties for yourself, then you have to master these skills anyway. There is no serious investor or developer I know who hasn't mastered all of these four skills. And mastering these skills needs investment in your education and a little bit of time and practice to get into the swing of things and make these uh, skills fire for you. But they're all learnable. Now, this little bit at the bottom, um, packaging the deal and selling this deal on to another investor involves another layer of complexity, as it were, with marketing. As well as marketing for vendors, for sellers of property, you've also got to, got to market to investor clients. You need to have a network of pre-qualified um, investors and by pre-qualified, I mean you know their investment criteria, you know what they're looking to buy, uh, the funds they've got to, uh, available, and the fact that they can proceed pretty much immediately at short notice. So when you're actually packaging these deals and selling them off to other investor clients, that involves a whole extra layer of complexity. You've basically got to have um, a target list of investor clients who are ready and willing to take these property deals from you. And you've got to bear in mind that your investor clients are highly unlikely to be like you. You've got to figure out what the profile is of your typical investor clients. They're likely, for example, to live out of area. They're likely to not have the time to do the deal sourcing themselves. They will be in a profession, they might be lawyers and doctors, etc., or they might be business owners, busy with their day-to-day -day trading business, but looking to invest the profits into property. They want to do property, but it's not their main thing, it's not their main focus. It's a long-term investment wealth building strategy running alongside what they're doing in the day-to-day. -to, -day. to cut a long story short, when you are a day-to-day -day property investor, you're doing it full-time. Property is your business. You want deals with a little bit more juice in it. You want your payback on the deal to be far quicker. Why? Because that is your main trade. When you are doing property as a long-term asset building, wealth generation type of thing, investment type thing, alongside what else, you, whatever it is that you do for your main job, then they tend to accept that their returns will come over a little bit of more of a longer term. So once you've identified your target list of um, potential investors to buy your package deals, you've got to then know how to market those deals uh, to those investors and get them to commit and push the button on these very, very quickly. Here's the thing though, um, selling on property deals is a bit like um, selling fresh produce such as strawberries. You know, they go mouldy, they go off pretty, pretty quickly. They have a very, very short shelf life. Why? Because if you flap around with the deal for too long and you can't get your investor to commit and move things forward, then quite frankly, the seller's looking to sell, they will go elsewhere. Oh, by the way, if you're liking this video and you haven't already done so, smash that like button. More people get to see it. It helps us out on YouTube. Thank you very much.
If you're doing lead, lead sourcing, lead trading or anything like that, also leave a comment below and let me know how you're getting on. One thing that's a bit of a mystery to me is why a lot of people new to property see deal sourcing as some kind of um, uh, full-time activity that they actually want to do. The thing to be aiming to do is not actually going to all this effort to find motivated sellers, do the deal analysis, negotiate them, secure the properties and all of that, just to flip them on to someone else. The aim in property for your long-term future has to be to actually own these properties, buy them yourself. Now I've mentioned all the activity that you need to do to package deals and flip them on to someone else. That's quite hard work. What I don't understand is why people don't focus on the fifth skill, um, which is funding. Because if you've put in all the effort into marketing for good deals, if you've done the deal analysis and the numbers stack, if you've negotiated the deal well, all you have to do is get the funding for these deals and you can complete on those opportunities yourself. Now with funding, there's all sorts of ways of doing it. Um, you know, you can get the senior debt from a bridging company or a mortgage lender. You can take uh, a mezzanine debt, as we call it. Uh, you can get equity funding. You can get joint venture partners to either loan you some money or invest in the deal uh, directly in terms of equity. But here's the thing, here's the thing. If you have a great corker of a deal, you will always be able to find people who will want a slice of the pie. As you see on the Sky Show Property Elevator, people come on that show with uh, property projects they're looking for funding for and they pitch them to five angels. And you see on that show that if the deal is good, we offer funding for those projects. If I put in all the money, then I am looking for a 75% share. Now you can come on Property Elevator to get your deals funded or there are plenty of uh, other avenues to find people that will invest in your project. What I have always found is that you have to have a deal. If you have a deal where people can see that the numbers are terrific within a minute or two, I mean you shouldn't need more than a minute or two to pitch a deal to a potential investor. Uh, they should, the numbers should just shine out from the page uh, and the risks uh, should be relatively low uh, and that means that really investors will be biting your hands off to get involved in that project opportunity provided you as the deal doer present yourself in a, a credible way. And here is the other secret about funding property deals which you are getting direct to vendor. As I've said already, you get funds from the bank and private investors and all of that, but you can also get funding from the vendor themselves. Now, vendor financing is a subject of a whole other video. If you want me to do that video, just put vendor financing in the comments below and we'll uh, put it in the schedule. But remember what I said earlier on, I talked about qualified lead and I talked about the vendor needs to have the capacity to accept uh, uh, an offer from you which is below market value, that means they need to have equity in the deal. So if they've got equity in the deal, they've basically got funds in the deal. Now, if you are handling the negotiation directly with the vendor and, you haven't, and you've got the skill and you know what you're doing and you know how to structure these deals, then basically you can negotiate and structure the deal so some of the funding comes from the equity that the vendor already has in the deal. Now these are near impossible to do when you have, a, have an estate agent in the middle, but when you're handling the negotiation, there's everything to play for. So deal sourcing is something we all have to do as property investors. What I'm basically saying is focus on finding corkers of deals, um, getting the numbers right, um, being really skilled at the negotiation, figuring out how to fund these deals and do them yourself. And by the way, even if they're cracking deals, um, they may be out of area or just not your bag, or you may have too much on your plate right now and you don't particularly want to pursue that deal right now. And in that situation, it is actually better for you to trade that deal on as opposed to simply source it for a sourcing fee. Now, that's another video as well. If you want me to do that video, put uh, property trading uh, in the comments and we'll, uh, we'll do that for you in a little while. So I know what you're saying, how can it be as easy as all that? What I'm saying is um, just instead of doing the deal packaging bit, get clued up on the funding bit, do the deals yourself, 
all sorted. So why isn't everyone doing that? And why isn't that working on all cylinders right now? Well, here's the reason why. The residential property market is on fire right now. It is heated. Properties are going up uh, in, in price very fast. Properties are taking a very short time to sell. And one of the statistics I look at is the average time in weeks that it takes to sell a property on the open market. Now, the time it takes to sell a property has halved from last year. So what does that mean? That means that if you're buying residential property, if you're looking for that three bedroom semi, um, and you have put out a leaflet, or you've done some marketing to try to get those opportunities below market value, you will find that there are less and less sellers out there who need to accept 20, 25% below market value from you. Why? Because they can put it out on the open market with an estate agent and get full market value in a matter of weeks. So what's happening right now is there are a lot of people who are basically new to property, haven't really marketed these skills. They're pretty much going on right move and perhaps getting a um, three, four uh, percent discount off the sale price that it's listed for um, with an estate agent. And remember, when you see properties for sale with an estate agent, those are asking prices. Actual sold prices are very rarely the same as asking prices. Everyone gets at least a 5% discount. And what amazes me is there are people who have literally just done this. They've gone on right move, they've found some property in Liverpool, it might be on sale for 60 grand or whatever, and um, they've got 5% off and they're saying, hey, look, I've got a negotiated lead. How skillful am I at doing all this stuff? And the problem is those sort of leads and opportunities just don't cut the mustard for an investor. Quite frankly, an owner-occupier could probably negotiate a better discount than that. So the secret of doing deals which you can actually fund and keep for yourself is really to find deals with a lot of meat on the bone. And by meat on the bone, I mean buying well in the first place. So you're buying from a motivated seller at a little bit of a discount to market value. And there's also opportunity in the deal. There's opportunity to uplift the value in that property. And that kind of double whammy uh, gives you enough of an equity boost, which means that after the deal is done, you can basically refinance the whole property and pull out all or most of your money. Because if you don't do that final bit, you will run out and your property investing career will grind to a halt pretty soon. So how do you achieve that in today's market? Well, the best opportunity for getting that value uplift is with commercial real estate. Commercial property is actually in oversupply right now. There's a massive oversupply of things like offices and shops and retail units and the like. There's an undersupply of housing. We need 300,000 homes each and every year. We're producing 100,000 homes. So we've got commercial property which is already built it's already in the right locations and it is a relatively low value in terms of price per square foot. And you've got residential property which they um, supply is not keeping up with demand and is much, much higher uh, price per square foot. In a lot of areas we're finding that commercial property is often a third or a quarter of the price of residential property per square foot. And thanks to newly announced um, uh, permitted development rules, you can actually convert from commercial to residential use under a rel relatively light touch um, planning system, which gives smaller developers a lot more certainty about undertaking those sort of projects. And this is the one thing right now, which I'm finding with my students, they are getting massive value uplifts in a relatively short space of time from identifying sites which are suitable for conversion from commercial to residential use and using that uplift um, to generate the equity that you need to finance and fund the deal. Now we've just finished filming series three of Property Elevator. Now we did three days of filming, there were 25 pitches, there were 25 property entrepreneurs uh, pitching for funding for their property projects. And I can't tell you too much because obviously you've got to wait and watch it uh, when it comes out, 
uh, in the autumn. Um, we'll be running some special programs around that, so make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you're notified when we do those videos. But anyway, back to Elevator. Uh, the juiciest deals from Series 3 you will find were all commercial to residential opportunities. Why? Because those offered the most value uplift in the quickest space of time. Why? Because you can get that value uplift under permitted development without going through lengthy planning permission. And because those deals were the juiciest, those were the deals that the five angels on the show competed most fiercely to fund. And that has to tell you something. That has to tell you where you should be focusing your efforts and energies in order to create real value in today's challenging times. Now, if you want to know more about applying all this to commercial property, I'm running a free 90-minute live masterclass. You can join me. There's a link down here and in the, in the description below. Join me for 90 minutes of more examples of what I'm talking about when we kind of glue all this together. But to wrap it up and summarize, there are a lot of skills that you need to master to do deal sourcing. They're all learnable and you can train yourself to do all of this sort of stuff. Now, if you find the juiciest deals, which right at the moment are commercial to residential conversion opportunities, then there's enough um, meat in the bone to get those deals funded. And if you can get those deals funded, you can do them yourself rather than packaging them packaging off residential deals and selling them to somebody else. So as we've covered a lot, let me know what you think, comment below, make sure you've subscribed, hit the bell icon, stay tuned for the next video. Bye for now.